Hi there. Now, in this question, it's all about hypothesis testing, finding critical regions for a binomial distribution. So, uh, if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video, give yourself a chance to read the question. When you come back, I'll take you slowly through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then, if you had a go. So, for this one, first of all, I'm going to define a random variable for this binomial distribution. Let's say we say let x be distributed binomially then. We've got n is 25, the number of trials, and probability of success is p. And we need to find out then these critical regions. I'm going to let the critical regions, let's just say, let the critical regions, we'll give them some kind of uh, letter. I'm going to use R, okay? And because we've got two critical regions here, there's going to be a lower critical region, I'll call it R with a subscript L, and there's going to be an upper critical region, so I'll call it RU. Whenever I'm doing hypothesis testing, I always put down something along these kind of lines where I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. So just as a reminder, I'm going to re reject the null hypothesis if the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to the lower critical value, which we'll put as RL, given the null hypothesis is true, that is that p equals 0.5. I'm going to reject HO if that probability turns out to be roughly around about 2.5%. Okay, so I'm just going to say here that it's approximately 0.025, But that's rejecting for the probability being less than the lower critical value. We're also going to reject, I'll put and here, reject if the probability that x is greater than or equal to the upper critical value, whatever it is, given that p equals 0.5, turns out to be, again, as close as possible to 2.5%, 0.025. So, We've got both of these statements. I'm going to number these 1 and 2. So we've got that one and that one. Well, number 1 is going to be very easy to work with, okay, because we can get our value directly off the cumulative Poisson tables. I'll show you an extract of these tables. What we do is we look under n equals 25, where p is 0.5, as we've got here, okay? And we're looking for the probability of a value being as close as possible to 0.025. And as I come down here, I can see that that value is going to be this one here at the 7. Can you see that? 0.0216. When it's x equals 8, that's too much. Okay, so it's going to be 7. So for 1, we can see that that lower critical value, RL, must be equal to 7. So that's that one. Let's just underline it there. Now, to get the upper critical value, if we turn to 2, if we just have a look at for 2, the probability that x is greater than or equal to that upper critical value, given that p equals 0.5, okay, is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability of x being less than or equal to 1 less than this upper critical value, ru minus 1, okay? given, again, that p equals 0.5. I've had to turn it around like this so that I can use these tables. Well, 
that means that if we're trying to get this probability as close as we can to 0.025, then the value of this term here must be close to 1 minus 0.025. In other words, 0.975. So let's just write that in. So therefore, the probability of x being less than or equal to that upper critical value minus 1, given that p equals 0.5, that value must be as close as we can get to 0.975. So coming down here, looking for a value close to 0.975, I can see it's got to be this one at 17. OK, it's showing 0.9784. So that means that therefore, from the tables, the upper critical value minus 1 must be equal to the 17 that we've got here. And from this, if we add one, OK, to both sides, we get that the upper critical value must be 17 plus 1, in other words, 18. So we've got our upper critical value there and lower critical value. So those critical values, 7 and 18. All right?